Hello everyone and welcome to today's video lecture on the gamma function and today I'm going to be discussing and deriving the Legendre duplication formula. This is a formula that relates gamma of z to gamma of 2z and so our agenda for today's video is very straightforward. We're just going to derive the Legendre duplication formula and just to state it now so you all see where we're going with this. This is a formula that says that gamma of z times gamma of z plus one half, close parenthesis, equals two to the one minus two z times the square root of pi times gamma of two z. Okay, so let's get started on this derivation. So in order to get started with this derivation, I'm going to ask you to recall the work that we did in our previous video on the beta function. So the beta function is a function that takes two inputs, we'll call them u and v here, and we say beta of u comma v equals the integral from one to zero of x to the u minus one times one minus x, close parentheses, to the v minus one dx. And we showed in my previous video, we showed that this has an important relationship to the gamma function, because this integral is actually equal to gamma of u times gamma of v all over gamma of open parenthesis u plus v, close parenthesis. So we're going to make use of that fact in our derivation of the Legendre duplication formula. So let's start by letting u and v equal the same value. We're going to let u equal z, and we're going to let v also equal z. So I'm going to replace u and v by the variable z in this equation. So then we have beta of uv, setting them both equal to z, that would be beta of z comma z, and that would then equal the integral from 1 to 0 of x to the z minus 1 times open parenthesis 1 minus x close parenthesis to the z minus 1 dx. And then based on our equation involving the gamma function, that would equal gamma of z times gamma of z all over gamma of z plus z, which I can just rewrite as 2z. So we already have an expression involving gamma of 2z, and we want to find a way of relating gamma of z to gamma of 2z. So it seems like the way to do that would be to evaluate this integral we have in our equation. So we'll do that to derive the Legendre duplication formula that will give us a relation between gamma of z and gamma of 2z. Now, if we look at this integral, we can simplify it a little bit by making a clever variable substitution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the variable x be equal to 1 plus t over 2. So we'll see why this is a good idea in a moment. So we're going to let x equal 1 plus t over 2, and I'm going to write all of these important facts about the substitution on the right-hand side of this page. So on the right side here, I'm just going to record that transformation that x equals 1 plus t over 2. And therefore, 1 minus x would have to equal 1 minus 1 plus t over 2. And that will simplify to 1 half minus t over 2, or just 1 minus t over 2. So let's write that on the right-hand side also. 1 minus x equals 1 minus t over 2. Now, if x equals 1 plus t over 2, which of course equals 1 half plus t over 2, then dx dt will just equal 1 half. Or in other words, dx equals 1 half dt. So let's write that on the right-hand side, dx equals 1 half dt. And now we have to look at our bounds of integration. 
So when x is equal to 1, this equals 1 plus t over 2. Therefore, t must equal 1. Okay? And when x is equal to 0, using the substitution 1 plus t over 2, we would see that here t would have to equal negative 1. I hope that's clear how the bounds of integration change. So our bounds using t as our new variable are from t equals negative 1 to t equals positive 1. Okay? So keeping those facts in mind, we can now rewrite the integral with this variable substitution. So we have the integral now from 1 to negative 1 of 1 plus t over 2 to the z minus 1 times 1 minus t over 2, all in parentheses, to the z minus 1 times 1 half dt. So this is a very nicely symmetrical integral. We'll pull out that 1 half and we get that the integral equals 1 half times the integral from 1 to negative 1, combining these terms of 1 minus t squared over 2 squared, all to the z minus 1 dt. And this will then equal 1 half times the integral from 1 to negative 1 of 1 minus t squared, close parentheses, to the z minus 1, over 2 squared, close parentheses, to the z minus 1 dt. So I'm going to bring that integral to the top here. And now I'm just going to pull out my other constants. So this is going to be 1 half times 1 over 2 squared to the z minus 1 times the integral from 1 to negative 1 of 1 minus t squared all to the z minus 1 dt. Now I'm going to rewrite that 1 half term in front as 1 over 2 to the 1 and 1 over 2 squared close parentheses to the z minus 1 when you multiply those exponents you get 2z minus 2. So combining those terms together you get 1 over 2 to the 1 plus 2z minus 2 times the integral from 1 to negative 1 of 1 minus t squared, close parentheses, to the z minus 1 dt. So now just to simplify that leading constant a little more, 2 to the 1 plus 2z minus 2 just equals 2 to the 2z minus 1. And again, this multiplies our integral from 1 to negative 1 of 1 minus t squared, close parentheses, to the z minus 1 dt. I'm going to bring that to the top here, and now let's assess this integral a little bit. We might notice at this point that the expression 1 minus t squared all to the z minus 1 is an even function. Whether I plug in a positive or a negative value for t, we're going to get the same output by squaring that number. So because this function is symmetrical across the y-axis, our integral from 1 to negative 1 is actually equal to double the integral from 1 to 0. Or put another way, if we were to cut this integral in half, we find the integral from 1 to 0 of this function is equivalent to the rest of the integral from 0 to negative 1. So, we can change the bounds of integration yet again and multiply the entire integral by 2. So, what I'm saying is this will equal 1 over 2 to the 2z minus 1 times 2 times the integral, now note the change in bounds, from 1 to 0 of 1 minus t squared, close parentheses, z minus 1 dt. So therefore, 1 over 2 to the 2z minus 1 times 2 times the integral from 1 to 0 of 1 minus t squared, close parentheses, to the z minus 1 dt, that equals what we have up top there, gamma of z times gamma of z all over gamma of 2z. Now I'm going to rearrange this a little bit. I'm going to multiply both sides by gamma of 2z and multiply both sides by 2 to the 2z minus 1. And then I get gamma of 2z times 2 times the integral from 1 to 0 of 1 minus t squared, close parentheses, to the z minus 1 dt equals 2 to the 2z minus 1 times gamma of z times gamma of z. So now we're about halfway done with our proof. Let me bring that to the top of the screen and I'll just put a blue line across it. So we're going to save that piece of information. 
Now we know that beta of u comma v equals the integral from one to zero of x to the u minus one times open parenthesis one minus x close parenthesis to the v minus one dx. So now I'm going to make a clever variable substitution within the beta function itself. We're going to let x equal t squared. And then when we do that, dx dt will equal 2t. So dx equals 2t dt. Okay? And then we look at the bounds of integration. Those don't change. When x equals 0, x equals t squared, so t equals 0. When x equals 1, t will equal 1. So our bounds of integration are unchanged. So now we have beta of u comma v equals the integral from 1 to 0 of t squared, close parentheses, to the u minus 1 times, open parentheses, 1 minus t squared, close parentheses, to the v minus 1 times 2t dt. So let's bring that to the top there, and I hope some of you can see why this variable substitution might be helpful. Now pulling out that constant within the integrand, we'll get that this equals 2 times the integral from 1 to 0 of t, now multiplying exponents to the 2u minus 2, times t to the 1, just bringing that up to the front, times 1 minus t squared, that's in parentheses, to the v minus 1 dt. Now we can simplify this just a little bit more. This will equal 2 times the integral from 1 to 0. Now I'm going to combine my t terms, so this will be t to the 2u minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1, times, open parenthesis, 1 minus t squared, close parenthesis, to the v minus 1 dt. And let's bring that to the top. So now we're actually going to pick a value for u. We're going to let u equal 1 half. And you'll see why this is good in just a moment. And we're going to let v equal z, our variable z. So plugging those things in, beta of 1 half comma z equals 2 times the integral from 1 to 0 of t to the 2 times 1 half minus 1 times open parenthesis 1 minus t squared close parenthesis to the z minus 1 dt. And now our t term in the integrand simplifies because 2 times a half is 1, minus 1 is 0, so t to the 0 just equals 1 there. So we get beta of 1 half comma z equals 2 times the integral from 1 to 0 of 1 minus t squared, close parenthesis, to the z minus 1 dt. Well, we can compare that expression to what we have in the top line. Remember, that blue line just sectioned it off. I'm not writing division here. So those two expressions are equal. In other words, 2 times this integral equals beta of 1 half comma z. Therefore, we have gamma of 2z times beta of 1 half comma z equals 2 to the 2z minus 1 times gamma of z times gamma of z. And now, guys, we're very close to being done because we have this very important identity with the beta function. Beta of 1 half comma z can be expressed in terms of the gamma function as gamma of 1 half times gamma of z all over gamma of 1 half plus z, close parenthesis. But we know what gamma of 1 half equals. Gamma of 1 half equals the square root of pi. And we proved that in my video on the infinite product definition of the gamma function. So we have gamma of 2z times the square root of pi times gamma of z all over gamma of 
I'm going to flip these things around. So z plus 1 half, gamma of z plus 1 half, equals 2 to the 2z minus 1 times gamma of z times gamma of z. Okay, so let's bring that to the top here. And now I have a gamma of z term on the left-hand and right-hand side of this equation, so those will just cancel. And I'm left with gamma of 2z times the square root of pi all over gamma of z plus 1 half, close parenthesis, equals 2 to the 2z minus 1 times gamma of z. So I'm just going to rearrange this expression by multiplying both sides by gamma of z plus 1 half and dividing both sides by 2 to the 2z minus 1. And that will give me gamma of 2z times the square root of pi over 2 to the 2z minus 1 equals gamma of z times gamma of z plus 1 half. Just rearranging terms there. Okay, so let's bring that to the top of the screen. And now I just want to simplify the left-hand side of this expression, so that will be gamma of 2z times the square root of pi times 2 to the 1 minus 2z. Just getting rid of that denominator by multiplying the exponent there by negative 1. So that's times 2 to the 1 minus 2z. And that equals gamma of z times gamma of z plus 1 half. Or Finally, just flipping this equation around, gamma of z times gamma of z plus 1 half equals 2 to the 1 minus 2z times the square root of pi times gamma of 2z. And there you have it. Let's put a box around this. This is the Legendre duplication formula which relates gamma of z to gamma of 2z. Very useful formula, actually, as we'll see later on in these videos. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please like or subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks, and see you next time.